You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. It's Dave okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. <laughs> Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become a tickling podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy. And a five-part coefficient. <laughs> My room is playing. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep till hippo. No sleep till hippo. <laughs> Action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely done, my friend. No. No. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Yeah, well, that, that was my son. What was that intro? You just said the name of the show? It's here. Yeah, name? I said, uh, you listen to Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network, and then I, I played the song. You just said, yes, yeah, so well, let's do the intro. That was the intro. No, you say, you know. You're listening to Dollop. This is a bi-weekly, bi-coastal. Did I do that before the music? It certainly has happened by now. You're listening to the Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is a bi-weekly uh, American history podcast. Each week I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to my acquaintance. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. You now happy? you do the music. Are you happy? Yeah, it's better. It's still shoddy. You suck. And called it, quote, his <laughs> Wait, you're doing it again? Jam? Yeah. I'm the fucking hippo guy. Come on, okay. we don't need to hear the intro again, dude. Wait, is it for five? This is why we can't have a new soundboard on. Okay. This is like this is bullshit. Stop playing the intro again. Nobody wants this. Is this some sort of lesson you're trying to teach? Are you trying to teach some kind of lesson? What is what is anything anymore? Well, what's going to happen is I'm just going to edit out the first part, and now you'll sound like an asshole. <laughs> that's unfair. That's 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 what's going to happen, and that's what you should have understood from the beginning of that. That's unfair. Why is it unfair? Because we don't. You just keep it the way it is. You know. Just how about this? Do it right. Well, it didn't happen. Sometimes, in in recording of events and 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 exciting. Who are you? Exciting, Who are you? exciting moments in history like we're recording this right is now. what i feel like i feel like you and your son did one of those body switch things today mm-hmm. and now finn is here trying to like get through the show but just like why, why are we now shitting on my kid <laughs> no he's out of his element that's the whole out charm. of it. my kid now my kid's out of his fucking element is that what you're saying are, are you you'll have fun hitting you know dingers on the baseball field okay it's a fun it's a it's a light vibe Asshole. It's a shitty movie trope that's been done a million times. It's been nobody... done once. What the fuck? Are you One time. About? It's done all the fucking like father time. like son. They did it Jesus, once. Jesus, what are you stupid? There's a movie out right now. What's it called? It's it, they, they're they're doing a lies. Version. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. You have fake news. Everyone's fake news. Look, if you're upset about fake news, um, if if what's going on in the news is bothering you, well, talk space is. Uh, it's therapy that really fits with today's world. Sure, you you understand. Like you're a guy, and um, and you're yeah. Uh, well, you're having a good time right now because um, a report came out and it made it seem like you didn't actually work with uh, an enemy country, um, and you're still getting to put uh, you're getting to put brown people in cages on the border, and um, it, the other party totally fucked up. Uh, so maybe sometimes you just call and you, and you mean, talk to your as, therapist this about is as thick as it's been laid. how awesome it is because now you might win the election. Um, might? So <laughs> so life, might nonsense. Life can be stressful between work, family, and everything in between. It's not easy to find time for yourself. Uh, Talkspace Online Therapy makes taking care of your mental health more affordable and convenient than ever before. Simply provide your preferences for therapy and Talkspace will match you with one of 4,000 thera- plus therapists uh, the very same day. Send your therapist unlimited text, audio, picture, or video messages from anywhere at any time. No matter what you're going through, you're not alone. Join men- more than 1 million people who are happier with Talkspace, inclu- yeah. including <sighs> Dawn. Talkspace has more than 4,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing the challenges we all face. Yeah. Like you, you should... To match with your perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code DOLLOP to get $45 off your first month and show your support for this show. That's DOLLOP and Talkspace.com. You should especially um, 
Check out Talkspace if you wear a tinfoil hat. Uh, the dollop has also supported in... People do come up to me and say that they... A lot of, like, I did a show with a comedian the other night, and she was saying how she uses Talkspace from this show. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. A comedian. That's right. Yeah. Comedian. And she and she enjoys it? Yeah. I've heard from people who are, like, in places where they can't... Like, you're not in a city or whatever, and there aren't a lot of therapists around, and it's very helpful. Yeah. Also. Um, the dollop is supported in part by Casper. Mm. Not, not the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> no one's made that joke. It's a I think sleep... it probably says in there, please don't make that joke. It's a mattress uh, situation. Uh, it's a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at Jose a time. Jose and I sleep on a Casper every night. You do. You and That's Jose right. sleep That's on right. a Casper. And, and right. you, you do cuddle? How's the We do the forehead to forehead contact and one of us purrs. <laughs> and that's what Casper is best at. Uh, forehead it says to forehead it right there contact. on the box. Uh, they offer affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman and sells directly to the customer. Now, but the uh, middleman is really getting screwed in some the of middle, these the middle deals. Man is that really... guy's like, hey, the business of being in the middle. Is what so... the fuck? I used to have a good thing going. <laughs> um, how was your, no, you, you took out your Casper, it came in a box. Comes in a box that's too small to fit a mattress. Then yeah. you open it. Then you got a mattress. It uh, expands. It, it expands. It com- comes alive in front of you. And then it you comes put it alive like, and then it walks itself into your bedroom. Beautiful. It lays down on your whatever. Beautiful. Yeah, and then it, and then you just put some sheets on. The and thing. you and and you sleep comfortably on that bad boy. Sleep like a baby. Yeah, I mean, I guess better than a baby because they wake up a lot. Yeah, they do. Casper Ram mattresses combine multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep service with the right amounts of both sink and bounce. Do you get a lot of bounce on those bad boys? A lot of bounce, bud. <laughs> The bounces. That's that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm told. Um, now me, it's the sink. Uh, huh? Yeah. You can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. I like to sink into a. I like to sink into a goddamn mattress. That's my right, deal. I right. sink into one. Right, Casper right. lets me sink. Right. Yes. Get fifty dollars towards select mattresses by vid- visiting Casper.com/dollop and using a promo code dollop at checkout. Additional fees may apply for Hawaii and Alaska. Terms and conditions apply. So I apologize, Hawaii and Alaska, but you know you guys Getting knew that was coming. Screwed again. You are like scratch You, you got to be part of the the, the fifty, the, yeah. the forty eight, the lower yeah. forty eight. You guys are off doing your thing. Move closer. I have a plan. Finally, it's going to bring Hawaii and Alaska to America. Uh, we are also brought to you by my favorite toothbrush uh, in the history of mankind. It is Quip. Uh, one of the most important things we do every day, obviously, is brushing our teeth, yet most of us don't do it properly, which you didn't before Quip came along, did Rude. you? Rude. That's against little, the British, Mr. I feel. Black That's teeth. an attack. Yeah. You can't do that. I'll see you on Twitter. I'm furious. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so it's an electric toothbrush uh, created by Denison Designers. It's absolutely uh, wonderful. Multi-use cover, mounts to your mirror, and unmounts to slide over your bristles for on-the-go brushing. Yep. Why? Uh, declutters your sink or cabinet and makes traveling with an electric toothbrush easier. Quip doesn't require a clunky charger and runs for three months on one charge. Uh, and you can set up uh, a subscription uh, service and they send you a new uh, head uh, for your toothbrush that yep. you pop on and then a new battery and uh, you're good to go. You're back in the game. You're back in the game. Yep. You're right back in there. Yep. Um, I Yeah, so I, I've already done a couple of those changes. So my life's great. I've done a couple of subscription new heads situations i don't think anybody's asking for and you to brag about teeth it. are You're sweet awesome my dentist said i have the best teeth in america well your dentist sounds like a goddamn idiot and i said that's because of quip yeah all right uh brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended schedule every three months for just five dollars why three out of four of us use bristles that are old worn out or ineffective Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the american dental association and has thousands of verified five-star reviews yeah yeah um, that's, uh, so, uh, it's, it's why they're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash dollop right now, you get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at G E T Q U I P.com slash dollop. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, last but not least, we were brought to you by untuck it. Ever wonder, Gareth, why traditional button-ups look so long and baggy? I have wondered that. Well, that's because they were never meant to be worn that way. So why don't you think about that for a little while? I have one. I have two Untuck It shirts, so I've already thought about it. Okay, so you're not better than me. Untuck It shirts were specifically 
designed to be worn untucked. Yeah. Hence the name. Yeah, dude. it doesn't look like you know, like you're a kid who put on your dad's baseball jersey. I look like that in everything. <laughs> Untuck it. Actually, I don't look like that in Untuck it. I look like a man. That's what I'm saying. A grown man. Yeah, but in everything else, you look like Tom Hanks at the now, end of the Now, I'll bank. wear my Untuckets around the house with, with just my Untucket on. Dude, stop talking like this. And, and it still looks good. It still looks tight. It's a hot stop. shirt. Hot shirt, no matter what you're wearing. In my case, I'm talking about without anything else. Yeah, around. we get it. Yeah. Uh, it's the original untucked shirt, a modern solution to an old problem with no tucking or tailoring required. Uh, no matter your size or shape, their shirts are perfect untucked length. Um, I be, I'm, I don't, you've, so you've had problems with shirts in the past that look weird. Like, like this doesn't work. Yeah, untucked. that is, uh, that, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm not someone who, <laughs> I don't even mean to sound like a pitch man, but I'm not someone who like. When I go out shopping, really, you know, wants to try stuff on and really knows what I'm doing, quote unquote. Yeah, it's hard and to so, work a shirt. Uh, yeah, it's hard to work a shirt machine. Yeah. And, uh, and so, <laughs> like, I'll, you know, I'll buy a shirt and then I'll get home and I'll be like, oh, I look weird. Yeah. I look like I, I look like I lost a bunch of weight or something like that. And then, because it's too long, but it, like, fits in part. Yeah. But then, yeah, so. But Untucket's it's not the same thing. Untucket it works. That's what I'm saying. I know that's what you're saying. I'm just hitting the point harder. That's why I'm hitting hard. <laughs> <laughs> With more than 50 uh, fit combinations, untucked shirts look great on tall, short, slim, uh, and athletic guys of all ages. It's the armor hot dog of shirts. That's what we're talking about. How well does Untucked fit your frame? Very, very, very well. Uh, have you browsed online or checked out their brick and mortar stores? You should check them out. I'm busy. I can't. Try it on uh, in person at one of Untucket's 50 stores or go to untucket.com to get started. They offer free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. You can save 20% off your first order by using our code dollop at checkout. That's untucket.com, promo code dollop. We recommend. We both like. Do you have any uh, gigs you want to? Um? I'll be at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival April 25th, 26th, and 27th. Uh, you can go to garethreynolds.com and see where I'll be exactly. And then uh, you can also go there because I have a bunch of dates coming up, but I'll uh, plug those soon. Uh, I'll be at Party Boys, Party House, um, all of July. Uh, okay. And uh, we should also say that if you want to watch a video of the podcast, because we are recording this one in the studio, right. you can go to the All Things Comedy uh, YouTube page. And if you want to see me at Party Boys, Party House, nope, do not be plug live. that network, please. That'll That's be live twenty four seven. Please don't go uh, there. I'll be. Uh, yeah, we're I'll good. be. I'll be in what's known as the hot room. Doesn't sound like somewhere anyone needs to go. So, it's winking at no one, which is, believe it or not, what? getting worse. What are you talking about? Uh -huh. April 25th, 1776. Mm. That's why there's no photographs in this one or pictures or anything. Why come? They actually do not have photos. Now. Instagram? No. Oh, whoa. Eleanor Hooper was born in East Franklin. Maine. Okay. Your favorite. I like Maine. Maine's great. Her parents were David and Joanna Hooper. David was a veteran of the American Revolution. Okay. Uh, the couple would go on to have nine children altogether. Eleanor came to be called Nellie. Okay. I guess that's short for Nellinor. Sure. Yep. When Nellie was 19, she met George Butler. Okay. Uh, he's a sea captain. Sure. And uh, that's a hot job. That's a hot job. Yeah. You come rolling off the sea, the ladies are like, oh, hello, sea captain. Well, I had to tell them all how to die. <laughs> Is that how, what a sea captain? Yeah, is? most of, yes, mo for the most part, it's telling people where to put the bodies after they've yeah. died. Yeah. Move some of these bodies you, over there. Are you thinking of a, like a mortician or are you? Same thing in this era. Okay. <laughs> All right, it just seemed, yep. Take care, asshole. Good to meet you. Oh, yeah, it was great to... You're yeah, you're real contrarian, aren't yeah, you? Wow, you're a captain. Yeah, you're damn right I am. What have you done? Huh? Um, I, exactly. I, I own the bank in oh, town. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't have money. I know. I know. You're a captain. Yeah. Uh, George's father was one of the original settlers of East Franklin, so he's, a, he's an OG. Sure. 
Uh, the family very well off owned a sawmill, so George is a catch. Oh, well, Dave, you don't need to tell me they're well off. If they own a sawmill, boom, say yeah, no more. You know what I'm talking. I know about. what you're talking about. I That's know where the money is. I know money. I know economies. How else are you going to cut down the tree parts? Yeah, what are you going to do with the parts? The thing that goes into them. Yeah, what are you going to do? Things going to be gone if they don't have it in there. How are you going to make? How are you going to make the trees? Make stuff for your things. How are you going to make the trees in the square tell parts? Tell me an industry that gets by without that industry you're talking That's about. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. George and Nellie Butler uh, were married. Um, they lived on Point Butler, which named after them, obviously. Of course. Well, um, I would go there if there was like a Reynolds Island. I would obviously, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it was a very forested area. Nellie got pregnant after a couple of years. Okay. Things are going great. Sure. Uh, oh, but she died the day after she gave birth on oh, June Jesus. 13th, 1797. <laughs> You're a real asshole, huh? Yeah, she's yeah. out of the story. Okay. Uh, she had a good run. We'll never hear from her again. Uh, she's dead. What's your deal? What are you talking about? Very dark. It's not dark. I'm just saying we're not going to hear from you this You set lady it again. up. She's dead. She's out. Forget about her. All right, fine. Nellie Butler's gone. Uh, she was buried in an unmarked grave. Cool. I don't so understand So George that. is a good guy. Yeah, George is like, how about we pretend like she's not a thing? Uh, Put her under a rock. A shilling a word, you say? Um... Uh, so the baby's dead. George's uh, the wife is dead. It's all. It's the baby a, died too? Yeah, yeah. It's a do over. Jesus. Don't call it a do over. <laughs> it, that's what they called it back then. Uh, oh, so. Unfortunately, it'll be a do over. I guess this is a do over then. Yes. <laughs> a bit of a mulligan, I suppose it is. <laughs> One more shot, isn't it? Uh, after a couple of years, George started to develop a relationship with Lydia Blaisdell. What? Blaisdell. Uh, okay. You almost had me. Yeah. Um, she lived about 10 miles away in Sullivan okay. with her family. Okay. Uh, she's 15 years old. Mm. What? Oh, it's the age is a problem for me. How old is George? He's like 29. Okay. So yeah, there's an issue there what? for sure. Yeah, it's a problem. Why? I don't. Because she's 15. Well, she's like half I like, I like half how there's a, a phase where like we didn't really know <laughs> what like that was like that is fine but it wasn't fine actually then oh it wasn't yeah so so he's even as, okay that's, as that's things, sort of comforting in a yeah way. so as things started to head in the direction of courtship her father made it clear that he was not down with 29 year old George you'll wait until she's 16 that's right coming around asking about his daughter he's like that how about you not do that and find right. a lady your own age that's right. still alive um, and so for the most part, older men marrying teenage girls was not how it was done in Maine at the time. That's, they were not down with it. Right. It's heartening, right? It's actually, in a way, it's just the, yes, it is. It is. It's yeah. better than the alternative. Right. Uh, she's considered too young and the age difference was, you know, also an issue. Right. Right. Uh, Abner Blaisdell, her father, sure. Lydia's father, was also a vet of the American Revolution. A very religious dude. Sure. Super into the, the God stuff. The family prayed together um, and tried to uh, live life the way God wanted them to, right? No one had a nightmare. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, his, life's mar- his wife is Mary. Um, they had seven kids. They live on a 100-acre farm. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Except for the praying all the time. Yeah, the uh, praying all the time is a problem. Yeah. But, I mean, you could just tune out. Yeah, you could tune out. You know what I mean? Just start thinking, be like, ah, I got to get that molasses. Oh. Got to go get a bunch of molasses later. That's what you think happens during... Molasses. That's an errand. You, mo- going to get molasses is an errand. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. At okay. this era? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're an asshole if you didn't have a bunch of molasses. You gotta go get molasses. You gotta go get the, a bucket the, of it. Down at the you uh, have a shop. molasses house. Yep. Down at the sawmill. Yep. Go grab some molasses. That's right. You yeah. knew how everything worked in the town. I know the general overview of the history of this time, yeah. Yeah. I, and let me know if you have any questions. I'd no, love I to kind of help you through some of these. You're really filling in the, the holes that I have. You're welcome, man. It's just like being in the hot room at Party Boys. The hot room is so fucking great. Okay. And I'm in there all of July. Let's go. Uh, The town of Sullivan only had around 20 families. Um, Everyone in town knew Abner was against George marrying Lydia. This makes me worry that George might be on track to marrying Lydia. Because you're Well, you're sort of setting up the uh, counter argument. Like, um, yeah, I just don't think you'd do that unless we were sort of... (laughs) Headed for a destination. You know, you know what's going to happen. Just feels like. Well, maybe there's going to be some curveballs in here. I don't know. Uh, Abner had a quote notorious and inflexible opposition to their connection. No, okay, a hundred percent. These two are getting married. What? What are you talking about? Whenever you're ready to tell me. 
1799, Lydia spent most of her days in the cellar sorting and picking wool fleece. What a dream! That she's Who living the fucking. The she's cellar. living the life. This is a this is a young lady a who's year. living the dream. Uh, all day in the cellar picking, picking on wool. Picking wool. Uh, just yeah. yes. just picking shit out of wool. Yeah, basically. yeah. Um, in December, she became very ill. Okay. Uh, very ill. Uh, oh she's bedridden. She has a terrible fever. She seems very near death. Sure. And as she lay in bed, she heard knocking sounds coming from the cellar. Okay. It's the wool. Abner went down to look, found nothing. And there's no, no reason for there to be knocking. But still, to be certain, he got the family together and they all prayed. Smart. It, it better... Safe, safe and sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because if you didn't pray in this situation, what are you doing? Well, You're then, inviting... you know, but it may as well be And worst case scenario, you just talk to God for a few minutes. If you don't, a hell mouth could open up down there. Big time. Yeah. Uh, they prayed that if the knocking was a deception, then God would make it, then God should make it known to them. But uh, if it, the cause was actually God, then the noises might be preserved. So that's their prayer. So, so this is, without question, the greatest era for pranks. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. This I mean, is when you could yes. just so easily convince someone that you're God. They're they're basically saying, if if it's God, let's have it keep going. Let's not stop It is knocking. God. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, Lord, Lord. We are so humbled with your presence, Lord. Lord, why have you gone to the cellar? What do you need to communicate to us, Lord? Knockity knock. I want you guys yes, to Lord. just start fucking everybody in town. Uh, Lord, it's, uh, it's against the teachings, Lord. Oh, Dear not Lord. anymore. Not anymore. Just get out there and start fucking. Lord, even your terminology is so... Uh, Lord's super into pussy and just uh, getting uh, down uh, Lord, on Lord, shit. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord's Lord, into hot cock. Lord. Hot Lord, cock and pussy. Lord. Uh, super tight balls. Lord. Face loads. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord's Lord, into Lord, some... Lord, s- stop. Lord, please stop, Lord. Do you guys know what a blumpkin is? Uh, uh, girls, cover your ears. <laughs> cover your ears. <laughs> the nagging sound in the cellar kept coming back. So now the entire family starts hearing it, not just, not just sick Lydia. Sure. A little while so later... it's not a symptom of her death. That's it's, right. Uh, there's actual knock. Yeah. And then she's actually getting better. Well, the knocking's helping her. Yeah. Making her strong. A little while later, they heard a disembodied voice. How, how does one... Ju- what is a disembodied it voice? Means it's, it means it doesn't... It sounds like it's like... Far not, away? Or, or just like... like Bowley? I don't know. Like, what's what's the word for it? It sounds like it's all throughout the house, kind of. It's like a, you know. Like. Uh, it doesn't sound like coming from a spe- specific place. It's like. The house is talking. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, the house is not talking, but it. The voice is coming from inside the also house. Also, they, they can't see a person that's making the voice, so. Hmm. Hmm. It's a woman's voice. Hmm. Uh, is she speaking? It's Kathy. I couldn't understand what it was saying at first. Um, they head down to the, ba- the the basement, and they'd find nothing down there. Uh, this goes on for a month. For a month? <laughs> what? The the voice, yeah, the the knocking, and then the voice for it's a, a month, a, a whole fucking month. Yeah, I mean, within that month, you're I, at least I'm tossing out alternative plans. I've got a lot of a different ideas. One of them is moving. Moving um, is high on huge. it, but also I think I can find what this is. You think you can find what the I'm voice certainly is. not living in a house where there is a lady's voice just kind of coming from everywhere. What if it's God? I th- then he's being a real jerk off, and I might need to rethink things. Well, wow, she's being a real jerk off. So, after about a month, the voice said she would appear soon. Hmm. Abner told the family to keep this on the down low. Don't tell anyone. Not, not a great look in the town to let everyone know that there's a ghost in the cellar. Yeah. 1799. There's, it's and not, there's 20 families, so it's like you got to test pretty high. Yeah, it's not it's not a good time to be, you know, like, hey, we got a ghost in our cellar. What are you guys doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, all right, because they're like, oh, nothing, Abner. All right, tonight we have to cook Abner's brains and eat them. That's right. It's the only way. Um, so the voice would dart around the cellar. So if they go down there, the voice would be bing, 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 darting around. This is insane. 
And then the voice claimed to be on a mission from God. It's a blues brother. That, exactly. This is a, the first blues brother story. Jane blues. This is a prequel. Wow. Um, on, Janu- on January 2nd, uh, the female ghost Wait a minute. appeared in the cellar. Is this going to be Nelly? She would stand there, shrouded in white, glowing. So the ghost is now there. Ghost is there. They don't often follow through. Right. Yeah. Well, this is a ghost that's uh, up to her word. She's fucking standing Classy. by her. Classy. Ta- <laughs> She's not all talk Classy. this ghost. She told the Blaisdells she was the ghost of Nellie Butler. Uh, okay. Our girl's back. I mean, you missed you her. Sa- and you said she, we wouldn't hear from her again. I did. Very she was, explicitly. Because she was dead. I, had too, had assumed that that yeah. would end the character. Usually arc. that wraps up the character. That is the end normally. So Nellie's been dead at three years at this point. Here she is. So ghost Nellie told Abner she was there to get Lydia and George married. And she didn't just want it. She David, ordered David, that it happen. David, she ordered. David. David. Quote. Dave. The parties must and would be joined. Wait a and minute. what God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. All right. Now, let me walk you through a scenario that I find Go. impossible. A lady has died. Her child has died. That's right. That's right. Her widower. Uh-huh. Uh, has found a 15-year-old That's right. that he likes, mm. and the family, because of just general conviction, but potentially religious conviction as mm. well, have said no That's right. to the union. And now the dead wife that, correct. has come back yes. to be like, he needs a new wife, and she should be that teenager. Yeah. Welcome to America, buddy. No. This is classic America. This Feels is how a we little do. illogical. Now I'm gonna let me, may I see the theory early. Mm-hmm. I don't think this is Nelly. Wow. Yeah. You're so cynical. Ah. Uh, I'm more positive and more yeah. uh believing in, uh-huh. in stuff that's wonderful, and I think this is Nelly. Yeah. It's a love story from Beyond the Grave. Just your ex matchmaking from the other side. That's how it happens sometimes. I came all the way back to make sure that these two kids don't pass up an opportunity for a fruitful bond. Boo. Boo. Also, give me the kids' teeth. (laughs) Two things. Two teeth. Abner, uh, obviously not about to stand in the way of what God wanted. Boy, uh, when God talks to you through ghost, a dead, dead ghost mom, for sure. uh, you don't say no to that. No. That's a fucking. Would you like the twelve-year-old too, good lord? So Nellie Ghost then told Abner and Lydia to go see George's father to tell him Nellie wanted them to get married. Okay, wait, to, who goes? So tell, Ghost so, Nellie ghost wants Nelly. Abner and Lydia. Okay, the two of them to go to not okay, George right. but George's right, dad. Right. And and say that Nellie's in our in our basement is right. a ghost, and she would like uh, she's near a bunch of wool. <laughs> so she also wanted them to tell George's father a verse of scripture. Okay, quote: For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. They are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, it's a spice what? Girl song. Yeah. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So she's using a little bit of scripture. She's throwing a little scripture right, in Abner's way. And, so he's like, okay, it, this is for sure her. And it makes her seem a little more like it's she's, validated. Yeah, she's got. She is the voice of God. Dude, God is giving her cliff notes. He's been like, this is the no. One. Nobody else would use scripture. No. 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 So off uh, Lydia and Abner go. Um, there's a terrible blizzard out. Boy, Nelly They is... head out immediately. Okay. Uh, so they're going through this nightmare. They could die. Maybe wait a few days until <laughs> the weather's died down. Gotta happen sort of. now. No. Um, Go I, say now. I talked to God, and he said, wait until it calms down out no. there. Really bad out there. So they go across ice sheets on the Taunton River. Uh, during the journey, Lydia said she's not down for getting married. She doesn't want to marry George. Um, but you know, God is, you know, talking to them through a ghost in their cellar. So 
Uh, this story's got lots of fun variants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lydia also said she really didn't think it was great. They were doing this uh, just because a ghost told them to. Like, so, that doesn't seem So, like... in other words, Lydia is, how would we say, logical? A 15-year-old kid who's like, what? Hey, I don't want to marry a grown man. And also, that's pretty, I'm pretty sure that's a character actress. <laughs> Uh, but while this is going on, Nelly appeared in front of them out in the middle of, you know. Hey! And she consoled Lydia and encouraged them to keep going. Just marry Just him. Just get to the dad's It'll house. It'll be terrible, but marry him. It's what I had to come here to tell you. So they finally get to George's dad's house. Um, they explain... Explain the situation. It's like, okay, so there's a ghost. Boy, I actually <laughs> should have rehearsed this because this is going to sound a little bananas, sir, now that I'm going to have to pitch it back to you. Well, uh-huh. uh, you remember Nelly. Yeah. Oh, George's. Sure, my, uh, yeah. my daughter in law, yeah, my daughter-in-law, now deceased daughter in law, buried deceased under a rock. daughter in law, yeah. no longer. Yes. The Lord has sent her back. She's saw, been living uh, in our basement for a few me. months. I'm sorry. She started by kind of throwing her voice what? around the house, but then eventually I, the apparition appeared. I don't. Anyway, let me. We're all. We almost died getting here. By the way, we saw her last night. We saw her literally last night. We okay, saw her. You guys should leave. No, no, no. Can't in this storm. We'll die. Have you been eating the mushrooms that you find underneath the cow? Patties? I would. I, I would. First of all, you sound like a cool guy for sure, and I would love <laughs> to talk about that at another juncture. Okay. But right now, I'm here to tell you that Nelly has said that that George and Nelly my is, Lydia, Nelly's dead. Who is fit? Nelly is not dead. She's around a bunch of wool in my cellar asshole okay and she's gave me a bible verse and so here is my daughter lydia Uh she is very young she is inappropriately young and i put my foot down more i could not have at the union ship but uh the lord has told nelly who again lives where my preserves are she's dead but now as a ghost and uh and so george and lydia have to get married and lydia's kind of opposed to it she's been a real stick in the mud just because he's twice her age and that's creepy oh okay this all sounds good what are you cooking? I'd love to come in and have a bite. That's a hit. Oh, boy. Um, so George's dad is, was also, uh, George's dad is also against George marrying this 15-year-old. He, so really, the only person on board with this is George and the ghost. It seems like it. Mm. Abner explained that his dead daughter-in-law was the one who wanted it to happen. Abner even dropped the scripture on George's dad, but he's not having it. George's Tells George's dad says, get, get the fuck out of here. He's disgusted they had come with such a story. Yeah. It's like, this is just fucking nonsense. Well, sir, I, didn't shoot, I didn't make this up. Don't come into my house with a bunch of ghost shit. You didn't make it up. Oh, there's a ghost in my basement who wants my, my prepubescent daughter to marry my old son. Get the fuck out of here, weirdo. Crazy asshole. Back onto the blizzard. Maybe yeah. you guys will die and come back as ghosts and tell me to, oh, make sandwiches or whatever. Like, get the fuck out of here. Good to meet you, sir. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, but then after they left, George's dad starts thinking the situation over. Sure. And he's like... It takes a minute to process this. He's like, why would they come in such crazy weather? Yeah. They're basically risking their lives. And then he also knew Abner had always been against the marriage. So it doesn't really add up. Yeah. So when Lydia and Abner get home... Uh, George wants you back. Go back through the storm. <laughs> What? No. Nelly starts knocking. My toes fell off. <laughs> Nelly starts knocking down in the cellar again. Hello. Nelly goes, they go hey, down there. it's Nelly, the <laughs> cellar. Yes, okay, we'll be right down. Uh, no, now. I want some food. Now. I've been out all fucking now. day. Now. Okay, okay. Now. Okay, hey, hey. Hello. Hi, how are you? How did it go? Not great. He's not really down. He go thinks, back now. No. He's into it. He's not into it. Go. You're a sh- he I, changed his mind. What I would like is some food. I'm going to go upstairs. And I do, and peck ish. Feed the ghost. We're going to have some gorp or Make whatever. Make me a sandwich. Cotton. Also some rum. So they go down there, and um, they talk to the ghost, sure. Nellie, again. Sure. Um, and this time she says, well, go get my dad, David Hooper, and bring him, bring him here. He's going to love this. Yeah, he's going to be like, my girl, what's up? My Absolutely girl, what reaction. you doing? Yeah. Um, so this is another this is another six-mile journey through the storm. So they decide, well, let's wait till morning on this one. No. <laughs> now it must be. But the storm's pretty bad even in the morning, but they still head out. Okay. Um, they go all the way to Franklin where David Hooper uh, hears the story. And he's like, uh, yeah, no, I'll go see my do- uh, dead daughter's ghost. Um, okay. 
Cool. So, so the least resistant. Yeah, the he's like, yeah, like, let's go do this. Awesome. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's weird. I didn't Which expect this. Which jacket should I wear? Uh, I have a ghost jacket, and then I have just like a winter jacket. I wear this one. <laughs> Um, so then Lydia and Abner were told to go see George Butler after they told uh, David Nellie's that, dad. Right. So they go to George Butler and they are like, "Hey, your your ex, your um, I don't know what we call her. You're almost your yeah. dead. Your your ex wife, your old wife, the dead wife. Right. Um, she's actually in our cellar. She's glowing. She's white. Um, she's saying a lot of stuff. She's pretty chatty. Right. Um." And George is like, oh, okay, I'll come, ch- I'll, I'll cruise over and check sure, that out. Sure, sure. Um, so David is already on his way, and now George is headed over there. Cool. Um, David so it's Hooper. It's going to be an emotional reunion. Yeah, it's going to be a big day. Big ghost day. Yeah. Uh, so David Hooper arrives at the uh, Blaisdell home first in, in the afternoon. Sure. Goes down to the basement. Hello. Super shocked to see his daughter as a ghost. Sure. It's super weird. Hey. Hey. Hi. I live in the basement near all the wool. Hey. Hey, Dad. I, I guess I mi- miss you. I do miss you, but I this is you. also super... The only uh, thing I need to get done is for Lydia and George to get married. What? I don't... It's my mission now. That's your mission? Yeah, it's cr- weird, but... It's not... Lo- God works in really weird ways. I don't know if that's a God thing. Whoa. Okay, that makes Bring sense. Bring me some rum. Yep. Put it down here. You're gonna. What are you gonna do with that? You're a ghost. It's a sacrifice. Turn your back, and okay. it'll go away. What? Oh, uh, wait. How can you drink if you're? Uh... I didn't. Huh? You went and gulp. I and was the, doing uh, pretending. Huh. Ooh. Okay. I don't want. to. See ya. So, uh, David has a chat with the ghost, and he's convinced it's his daughter. Sure. Um, David wrote, quote, by the request of the specter sent by two messengers, I went to Abner Blaisdell house and by conversing with, with, uh, she obtained such a clear and irresistible tokens of her being the spirit of my own daughter as gave me no less satisfaction than admiration and delight. She gave a reason satisfactory to me why she put me to the trouble of coming there instead of coming to my house. (laughs) It's just the storm is worse for ghosts. I couldn't. I didn't want. They to, don't make mittens on this side. So I didn't want to go to back to your house, Dad, because I know Mom keeps a lot of canning and stuff in the cellar, and also you guys have the washing machine, and it's quieter here. And then I also thought, well, I'm a ghost, so maybe I should freak out people I don't know. I can't travel. Also, you guys, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an adult, and it's just a bummer to live with your parents, even it would if be you're weird. a ghost. All the other ghosts would think it's weird. <laughs> I'm looking at a condo. Uh, so then George shows up, right? So David's very excited. His daughter's back sure. as a ghost. Um, so then David shows up I'm a little hoping bit later. That a bunch of that, what I'm hoping is that ghost Nellie doesn't have a bunch of returning feelings once she sees George. Oh, my God. I know, right? Because then talk about rom-com. Oh, boy. Hello. Hello. So David uh, David comes in. He's brought a friend. Um, Wait, George brought George, a friend? George brought a friend. Sorry. George brought a friend? Yeah. He, he's this like, is I don't Gus. want this. Well, wouldn't you bring a friend? If we hang like, out. Wouldn't they be like, hey, your your ex is down in my basement as a ghost? Wouldn't you be like, hey, Frank, you want to come with me? This is a little weird. No, it would be weird. Yeah. I mean, every answer is weird. Yeah, but I'd yeah. definitely be like, no, I'll do this. I want to go see my ghost wife. You wouldn't bring a, a buddy? You wouldn't bring Luke? You wouldn't be like, hey, Luke, you want to go see my ex-ghost wife? I'd probably bring Luke. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so the, he gets there after David has already finished talking with his dead daughter, and then George goes down and talks to the ghost, and he's convinced it's Nelly. Uh-huh. Um, see, now, in my head, I'm thinking George is behind this. Yeah, well, it could be. But maybe it's a ghost. You're a dick. Quote, when I was called to talk with this voice, I asked, who are you? It answered, I was once your wife. Whoa. The voice asked me, do you remember what I told you when I was alive? Yes. I answered, I do not really know what you mean. And the voice said, do you remember I told you I did not think I should live long with you? I told you that. If you were to leave me, I should never wish to change my condition, but that if I was to leave you... I could not blame you if you did. George is like, wow, this is something only Nellie would have known. What is happening? So she's saying she uh, she basically did not think she was going to live a long life. And so he thinks because she said that, that she would only have told him that. But there's no way any... 
any woman's also going to tell her friends that like she's going to be like I'm so I'm so scared I'm going to die young like that's just a thing okay so he but he thinks well that she could only told I'm, me I'm, starting to I'm think, the guy I'm starting to think ghost yeah yeah quote uh, there was something appeared to my view right before me like a person in a winding sheet and her arms folded under the winding sheet I'm tangled <laughs> I can't. The sheet is too long. I've come back to say, untangle Someone me. Someone help! The, don't pull on it's this like, side. It only tightens. It. Yeah, it, it cuts the circulation if you do it's it there. It's this arm and then this hand. Oh my god! I don't oh, get my blankets. F- fucking foots in it now. They don't give a, a blanket instruction in ghost. Get scissors. This work. is a total redo. Work. I should have gone to the ghost Depot. orientation. I didn't go. Now I'm now I'm wrapped in blankets. Oh. By this, oh, okay. Uh, her arms folded under the winding sheet, and on her arm there appeared to be a small child. What? Yeah. What is it's going ba- on? It's the baby. Yeah, I know who it is. Yeah. By this appearance, I did not know possibly, but I might be deceived. I reached out my left hand to take hold of it. I saw my hand in the middle of it, but could feel nothing. The same evening, it appeared and disappeared to me three times. So he put it. He reaches out, and he and his arm goes through the ghost. Is it the same people who did hologram Tupac? <laughs> Is that the big reveal? <laughs> yeah, it's the same technology. I knew it. George's friend was there and watched the whole thing and confirmed that he saw George's hand pass through Ghost Nelly. Okay, so. David Hooper, father of uh, the dead, Nelly, right? Uh, he goes to see George's dad, who's a who, member who's resistant to this whole yes, uh, great, but sort of thought thing. a little once he realized the yeah, he's thought a little bit, right. um, and he and David tells him yes, the ghost thing is true, and she's hanging out in the cellar of the uh, Blaisdells, and uh, he spoke to her, tangled up in a sheet. She's a hell of a ghost. She's a hell of a ghost, like a Houdini, uh, a Houdini. And he says, guess what? It's her. That's my daughter. And um, he he wants he wants George to marry Lydia. She wants George to marry the ghost. Yeah. So George's dad was like, "Okay, fine." I mean, this yeah. I mean, I get it. This makes sense. <laughs> okay. So so just to be clear, to get a head count, there's now no resistance except for uh, Lydia. Except for Lydia, but it seems like everyone's pretty on board. Yeah. Well, George is obviously going to be on board. Yeah. I, yeah, I would assume so. Um. So George's dad's in. Um, after all, this is clearly God's will, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so on January fifth, George's dad headed over to the Blaisdells and said he was on board. He would he would let George marry Lydia. Well, is there going to be a more awkward ceremony? Vibe? It's not going to be great. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a little odd. Okay. Um, so both Abner, father of the bride, father of the groom, father of the ex deceased bride. <laughs> Oh, deceased lady. Deceased bride. Thank you for coming here. Dece- dead deceased baby. And, of course, George's friend. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's crazy when he almost touched the baby. Um, so both Abner and George's dad are still not thrilled that this is happening, but they sure. feel like, well, this is God's will, so we don't really have a choice. Right, yeah, yeah. He may, he wor- Again, he, uh, this is what people forget. He works in mysterious ways, which is in a lot Fair. of ways is carte blanche. Yes. So... Yeah. That's why he appears in toast, or sometimes dog's anuses, or a tree, it's, or a tree, yeah. or uh, uh, you know. I'm something. sorry, did you say dog's anus? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's happened too. Someone mm. thought their dogs. Uh, is that is that something like that? Yeah, mm. it was the butthole or butt. I, I would just recommend if that if you if you're feeling that maybe you're looking too close at the dog's butthole. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess that because is, you really got to be staring at a dog's butthole to see Jesus in there. That's, that's like the ten minute after miracle question. Yeah. Hey, Andy, why were you staring at it so long? I was trying to see. First, I was trying to see if I could see like like boats or different kind of shapes like that. <laughs> you know, how you look at an anus and try to figure out what it resembles. What's hidden inside it? It's like a magic eye. I mean, why do you have a dog? Yeah. <laughs> what are you walking it? Oh, um, so the two fathers set the date of the wedding, uh, May 29th, 1800. Okay. So not too far off. Right. Uh, so the word then went out that 29 year old George was going to marry 15 year old Lydia locals. Not happy. Well, but they haven't met Nellie. That's right. They haven't met the ghost lady. Lord. Um, first they were 
First, they were shocked to hear that Nelly was back as a ghost. Shocking news. And then second, they were shocked that the ghost was telling Lydia to marry George. Yeah, it's a little scandalous. So they, some thought, not all, but some thought Lydia was clearly faking the ghosting in her own basement to trick George into marrying her. But but wasn't it, was it not George who wanted to marry her and she was resistant? I guess maybe she could, after the fact, be feigning resistance mm. to, but still George was into it, right? Would a girl who invented a ghost act like she didn't want to get married? Don't take on the role of the narrator. <laughs> <laughs> talking to you but was um, he ever resistant to it he was into it no he's into it okay okay but i think she's into it too i think that she you know was into him okay um because they were because they were hanging out together they were he was like cruising by the house like it clearly was a connection there it's a cool guy to be yeah, cruising yeah. around she's 15, 15. Year olds. yeah 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 um so some thought the apparition was actually a demon or at least demon familiar well, at least that there are logical counter arguments yeah, that's right. that people are, you know, people, yeah, people are come up with other stuff. You like, know, fools, it's not an apparition, it's a demon. Demon, she's clearly a demon or demon familiar. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're the demon faction. <laughs> One of Nellie's sisters went to see the ghost with her husband. Uh, Lydia spoke to the ghost and the ghost answered. But this was not the voice Nellie's sister expected. Hmm. When the voice said, quote, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, which is what, uh, that's classic ghost talk. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's, that's just that's, almost hacky. It's legalese, essentially. Yeah. The, sisters real, the sister realized this was not Nellie's normal voice. No, no, no. She's doing a girl in the woods impression. <laughs> Look, it's not crazy. Look, if you are not on board with the idea that this ghost is now in the basement doing some sort of character yeah, reel, yeah. you're out of your mind. I, no, I totally agree. Come on. Um, I'm testing out some new material. <laughs> I'm doing impressions. I'm doing a one-man show at Melbourne. It's really in, good. In, in April. Yeah. Um, they took me, but not the guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the... So the sister's like, that's not Nellie's normal voice, but it's the voice that Nellie had when she was sick and dying in bed. I am just, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on a lot of these words waiting for the logic. Yeah, person, yeah, no, this is all logic that you're getting. This, this, this is person. All, this is all the logic. Okay. This is the logic. Okay, so this person is now, they're like, well, she does have sick voice. And <laughs> my guess is when you die with sick voice, you maintain it. Well, her Forever. sister then thought that this was, because of the voice, this was evil at work. Quote, uh, a demon is inside of Nelly. Bingo. Quote, from this time, I cleared Lydia as to the voice and accused the devil. Uh-huh. Okay. So we've got our demon camp, our uh -huh. Nelly camp, and our devil camp. Yes. Okay. Others started coming by to visit the ghost. Okay. Captain Paul Simpson's came, Paul, Captain Paul Simpson came because one of Abner's sons kept insisting that he check it out. Sure. So yeah. one of the sons, one of it's the like Blazes sons was like, dude, you got to see this fucking ghost in my I'm basement. I'm busy. No, it's I'm fucking. I'm swamped. Captain, it's fucking crazy. Thank it's you a for ghost. respecting me, but I'm busy. Look, it's a ghost. I, this ship's not going to hey. barnacle itself. Okay. She's talking scripture. Well, I do like that. She's all wrapped up. She did not get out of her blanket or whatever. Sure, I love a tangled blanket. And she's like telling people to hook oh, up. All right, let's go. <laughs> so he goes to the cellar. Um, the sun puts out the candle because they peop, uh, you, they always blew out the candle before the apparition would appear. Yeah. The, uh, again, there are limitations as to what they can do in the afterlife. Some right. of them need a candle blown That's out, right. like a birthday. <laughs> yes. Um, so they blow out the kennel, they wait, and then the knocking comes. Oh, good news. <laughs> look alive, look alive. And then the captain spoke, and Nelly said, quote, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And then the captain... What? And, and, then, and then the captain and ghost Nelly chatted for a while, um, she apparently was very good with words. She had a way with words. Sure. Uh, she really knew how to win people over. Sure. Super personable Charming. ghost. Yeah, for sure. Um, quote, 
After a little discourse with her, their fears were easily dissipated and succeeded by a singular... I know it sounds crazy. It's I, If I heard it, I would think it's crazy, yeah, too. Yeah, no, I would think this was total bullshit. I would be like, no way, but yeah, here but I here, am. Here I am. And I'm the one telling you, so yeah, I totally get it. I'm like, I'm the ghost, and I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, this is bananas. <laughs> um... Uh, succeeded by singular pleasure. So delightful was the mode of her address and conversation. So well, she's thank good you at, for buying She's it. good at talking. Yeah. Pretty soon everyone was stopping by to get a look at and Hello. have a chat with the ghost of Nellie Butler. Hey, what's up? Hi. Postman? Hey. All right. Please s- send in someone else. The bakers out there. Awesome. Well, all the bakers. Great. And all the Maybe fishermen. we do it in a big group of bakers. It's yeah, I guess. But better that's not that very way than doing individual cool. bakers for me. It's just, you know, I've been doing this all day yeah, for the past well, three days. It's just been nonstop. I think people would think that was rude if you. Sure, we could do them one on one, but yeah. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time with them. Let's so just, it's just mostly have their question ready. I guess is just what a, I'd say. A photo, and then they want uh, like a signature, and then I'm and not. Then like a I five can't minute, get my hands And then like out. a five minute chat. I can't be doing five minute chats for all the bakers or all. It's just it's not possible. I have a life. I have to go back to Ghost Town, too. I have a f- whole thing there. I have a family there. I'm like. Uh, they're like, what's going on in the cellar? I'm like, it's nuts, you know? Dude, look, the point is just bring in one of the fucking bakers. Let's go, okay? Well, that seems like demon talk. Uh, no, I'm just it sorry. Did. It no. seemed very demonish. No, no, no. I, mm. for, forgive forgive yeah. me. Oh, you have somewhere to be? Like a demon house? No, it's none of that. No, Maybe I just... there's a hell mouth nearby that you have to go back into? Please just send in some bakers. Okay. Let's just do this. Okay. Thank well, you. Maybe be, maybe be nicer. I said I was sorry. I've been doing this a lot for the past couple well, this days. Is, this is pretty hard. I said, tone. "What do you mean?" The tone's need? not great. It's oh, a demonic. I have no. It, it's a, d- a demon please familiar just tone. Just bring them. I'm excited okay. to meet okay. the fucking okay. bakers. Okay. okay, there's the. I'm yeah. having trouble. Okay. So everyone's stopping by to have a chat with Nellie Butler. She would often tell them. What else quote, am I going to tell you, Nellie? There's another thing. She would also uh, often tell them, "Quote: Fear not." One, one of Ange- evangelists who stopped by. So he, she has catchphrases now. Yeah. Uh, he stopped by on his travels and said he thought she would knock, f- uh, said he thought she would knock first to avoid scaring people. So he's like, that's why she's knocking first because she doesn't want to just pop in and be like, ah, oh, oh Jesus. God. So it's like a slow uh, intro kind of thing. Yeah, right. Um, he also said she only appeared in the cellar because that allowed the uh, Blaisdell family to be able to be ghost free upstairs. Absolutely. And I think, of course, you, I think, you know, let's say there's 5% of the people listening to this, they think that sounds crazy. Now, <laughs> no, you guys are wrong. Yeah. Okay. When you think about it, that the basement's where you keep your wool. That's right. And the last thing you need is some sort of someone ghosting your upstairs, That's you know, right. ghosting around. Like you're in your kitchen, you turn oh, around. God, oh, God, yeah. ghost. Sorry, like, so... just the hen eggs look fantastic. Yeah, that's not what yeah, you need. No, it's that's, freaky. That's it comic. <laughs> yeah. That's not the vibe we need. That's not right. at all. Uh, ghost Nelly was not in any way a normal ghost. She. I'm quote, like Kramer. <laughs> I just come over at certain points and just... Look, I can juggle cats. Yeah. She, quote, exhibited all the mental and emotional characteristics of a living human being. Well, that should not be selling you. That's, no, that's how fucking super ghosty she is. No. <laughs> She's like a real human. She was also super into the affairs of the she living. Pees, she pees. She, she pees, pees during one of them. <laughs> Uh, she's also super into the affairs of the living. She seemed motivated by personal vengeance, vanity. I'm and opening a, a bank account. And arranging the marriage. Okay. So so she's just from beyond the grave, maybe like a wedding planner. Yeah. Yeah. I Everyone, have a show on HGTV. Every ghost has a thing. I think this would be nice. That bouquet's perfect. She also often announced where and when she would show up next. I'm doing a 730 <laughs> and then a 945. It's the same show, so I, you know, don't come to both. <laughs> uh, and she invited people to quote, "Come and handle me." What? So they, because no one could touch her, so would like, put, right? Uh, okay. Go and put your hands. Come through punch her, through me. Which they would. Um, this just increased some people's belief that Ghost Nelly was a fraud. She didn't at all act like a ghost. 
This is not like all the other ghosts that I have uh, uh, met. I've met a lot of ghosts, and none of them are chatty or like, hey, give me a hug. Or, that's or, why we are joining the demon party. We are pretty demon. positive it I is love, a demon. It's definitely that a works. demon. It's definitely a demon. We're not crazy. What else could it be? I also, but my friend was saying it might be demon familiar. I'm not opposed to that theory. Okay. It is wild, okay. but I definitely think it is a demon potentially outside chance demon familiar. Yep. Outside of that, nothing logical yeah. makes sense. Okay. Yes. But Nelly, uh, ghost, ghost Nelly was not just appearing in the cellar now. She started popping up in different houses. I'm doing a tour. <laughs> I'll be appearing at the, the, the next seven houses on the way. Some as far as... 7.30, 9.40, come out. Some as far as five miles away. Sometimes she showed up outside. One of the Blaisdell's sons said he saw the ghost kicking it out in the fields around their house. Cool property. <laughs> What's your property line? I try to get apples, but every time I reach for them, my hand goes through the apple. Looks like it should be a solid harvest from what I can tell. Oh, this is so great to just be out in the sun. It's great. Mm, anyway. Okay, I'm holding my baby. Hey, this is outside. It's cool. Um... So she said she didn't touch. He said she didn't touch the ground. She was like floating above it. Sure. Um, that son was actually not thrilled about the ghost Nelly the whole time. He had spoken out against her to other people in the town. Right. So soon she told him that she had come on behalf of God and speaking against her was speaking against God. Mm. So she's dropping the Ergo. fucking hammer. Right. Yeah. News of the ghost spread to nearby towns. I would imagine that at the time, this would spread everywhere. What is more interesting oh. than being like, there's a ghost to talk to? There's literally nothing else happening. Everything else you're doing is like, oh, we was just watching a dog. <laughs> That's it for how long? Four months. <laughs> he just walks a bunch. We think we've seen Jesus in his butt. Oh, God. Yeah, that's what we said. Okay. It sort of talks. Yeah, this is why the, the preacher says, don't look at a dog's butt for so long. Yeah, well, what else can do? Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, so people started making the journey from around the around the country or around the area right. um, to see uh, Ghost Nelly. Yeah, for sure. There were so many people now, they would pack into the cellar. Okay. So... A this ghost Nally would come and she would often talk to the crowd for two or three hours to cover a bunch of different topics. What is going on? <laughs> what? I mean, okay, look, I understand that like their their minds had not really adjusted. Like there's stuff we do that we have yet to fathom for sure. Yeah. But I mean, she's doing like full on TED talks yeah, in yeah. front of sold out houses. Yeah, I mean, look, she's a big attraction. What else is going what on? Is she like you said, about what else for is going on? Two to three on? hours. Everything, man. She fucking covers. Out houses are crazy, she huh? Literally, they ask her questions. She answers they all topics. She's covering all kinds of shit. I'm running for president. Fine, I'm down. Okay. Uh, a witness quote: At first, the apparition was a mere mass of light, then grew into into a personal form about as tall as myself. We stood in two ranks about four or five feet apart. Between these ranks, she slowly passed and repassed th so that hey. any of us could have handled her. When she passed me, her nearness was that of contact so that if there had been a substance, I should have certainly felt it. The glow of the apparition had a constant tremulous motion. So... Deny that motherfucker. Don't that's talk to real, me like that. That's some real shit. A dude. I don't know. Touching ghosts. They're getting cocky. Watching ghosts bounce around. You just. Uh, what's up with the marriage? And we'll get to that. Right now, we're just we're just kicking it with a bunch of folks. Seems like she's just gone all Hollywood. Well, she's she's people like her. You know what? What's How she long until do? she's doing cocaine? I can't do an apparition unless <laughs> I have my two bumps. <laughs> I'm like Stevie Nicks. Blow it in me. <laughs> not everyone bought it uh some just thought the idea of a ghost was bullshit and it had to be a demon or it was something lydia had brought forth and was using witchcraft uh-huh mm -hmm. so another option uh-huh and some thought lydia and her sister hannah uh were using deception and trickery um creating this whatever this fraud to get george to marry her oh imagine those people became increasingly vocal as time wore on uh-huh they noted that ghost Nellie never appeared in a house that Nellie had actually lived in. I won't. 
Yeah, why? I'm just trying to look at all the other properties. But this like this like blows the idea of what a ghost is. A ghost. Nuh-uh, you'd blow the go- idea. Of- ghosts don't hang in places they've never been. Yeah, yeah, for sure we do. We love doing that. We do that a lot. What, what other ghosts has done that? I just don't want to go where I've lived. That's weird. <laughs> but the, you don't understand. Also, the Blaisdell Cellar was only ever lit by a candle or two, meaning someone else could be hiding down there. And the so, cellar at, had... So during, during these visits from beyond, yeah. at no point are people like inspecting the area with light? Well, they, yeah, they really can't because there's one or two candles and then they get blown out when the knocking starts and then they're in the darkness until the ghost appears. The cellar also had two other ways in. There was a window covered uh, by a wood and then a door to the outside. Okay, so there's a backstage. <laughs> At one point, a local guy snuck in and tried to impersonate the ghost, but everyone caught on pretty quick. He was grabbed. It turned out it was John Aran, a 33-year-old shoemaker, and they threw him out of the house. Okay, so the shoemaker was like, I'm going to have a little fun. Oh, let me show you motherfuckers. You, about- it's true what they say. Best sense of humor is cobblers. <laughs> Lydia said... I'm opening for her. Lydia said she's actually not sure about the ghost. She told her friends uh, she considered running away before the wedding day came. Mm -hmm. She actually came up with a plan to stow away on a ship and go to York where the family had relatives. But then she told George and broke off the engagement. George was not happy because he was a perv, obviously, and he was going to marry a 15-year-old. Right, yeah. Uh, naturally, Ghost Nelly heard about this plan to run away. I'm pissed. And the breaking off. That is, that's bad. She confronted Lydia. Bitch. In, in front of several witnesses in the cellar. So there's a bunch of people down there. She gets in her face. I don't mean to do this in front of people, but what is your deal? I'm a ghost, you motherfucker. I'm pissed. She told Lydia to stay. She told Lydia if she left, quote, her afflictions would sail with her. Yeah, that's right. So she's basically saying, wherever you go, I'm fucking going, motherfucker. Unless it's in the house. And then not. I can't. Or if go. you go to my house, then you're fine, I guess. Yeah. Stay here. Um, so at that point, Lydia's like, okay. And she agrees to marry George. Um, they get married on May 29th. And that argument was in front of people, you yes. said. Yes. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so if you're keeping track, this means... The ghost has been hanging around talking to people for about six months. Yeah, probably he's ready to do the hour. Um, the day after the wedding, Nellie Ghost visited the newlyweds. Hey. Hey, what are you guys doing? Pork in front of me. So can I watch? Come on. This whole thing was about this. I'm a real weirdo. I want to see George Then I'm going to jump in Lydia's body and it'll be me. Um, oh, yeah. Let me see. Um, so she told... Uh, she told them that Lydia was not going to live very much longer. Then it'll be me and her picking your next <laughs> wife. That'll be fun. <laughs> Girlfriends. Uh, uh, she said uh, Lydia was going to get pregnant, have a child, and then die soon after having the child. What? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much like what had happened to Nellie. Yeah. It, well, exactly. After the ghost dropped that bombshell, she stopped appearing in the cellar. Uh, and so then George and Lydia had to live with all the rumors and whispers from locals. There are those crazy people um, that almost got married because of that ghost. And, and, and it increased, like people got more and more upset about it, right? The ghost is gone. Right. A lot of people think she's, it's, it's fraud. A lot of people think it's a demon. Uh-huh. So shit's heating up, right? Yeah. Um, and then it goes on, and it's really sort of reaching a fever pitch, and then, boom, Nellie reappears. Hey. Hi. Hey. And it, back in the cellar again, and, That's of course, the sequel. people flock back to the cellar uh, to get a look at ghost Nellie again. She's doing props. That's right. Starting in August 1800, at least 100 people saw her in the cellar. Okay. So she's selling out. Yeah. Like, this is a big fucking show. Yeah, putting the cell in cellar. Uh, it's the same thing every time. The ghost would invite them into the cellar. Um, they'd go blow down. Out the candles, it'd be dark. Right. Abner would blow out the candle. Then there'd be the knocks. Then the white ghost would appear and start talking. 
Hey, what's up, y'all? What are you guys doing? Hey. Um, I heard a new song or whatever. That's great. Yeah, someone played a new song on the Fife. <laughs> but not everyone could see her at the same time. Some people, like she'd be right in front of someone and the person next to them would say they couldn't see her. What kind of, what are they working here? I don't know. Um, others would be like, no, she's right here. Uh, sometimes everyone would gather and she wouldn't appear at all. I'm not doing the show tonight. I feel tired and it's just a drain My and there's throat. so many negative Nancys. My throat. The reviews were awful. Um, she was always in a glowing white dress or shroud. Sometimes she had on a cap, sometimes no cap. Mm-hmm. Sometimes she'd be holding a dead rap baby. Okay, so there's looks. Yeah, there's different there's props, takes, looks. options. Sometimes she would hang back 10 feet. Other times she would lean in and speak right into people's ears. Hey. Uh, some kept saying this is bullshit, especially because uh, the ghost voice would come first. Then she would order everyone to leave the cellar and come back. So what? So th- so we can break this down. She says everyone come. Uh-huh. Uh, Abner goes down with a candle. Mm-hmm. He blows it out. Mm-hmm. It's dark. Yeah. There's knocking. Uh-huh. Then the voice goes, okay, everybody upstairs. Now leave. <laughs> now leave me alone for a minute. It's ghost stuff. And then they come back down, and that's when she appears, a glowing I mean, white ghost. Okay, so. So that's not, that's pretty normal. It's not normal. One man noted, quote, That's weird. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was always she or one of the Blaisdells who would, who always controlled the condition to her appearance. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this opens the suspect list a little. But eight times, the ghost did not tell people to leave and come back. She just appeared glowing in ghost form oh, in front of the, them. What's going on? <laughs> Also, usually yeah. Abner would blow out a candle and plunge the cellar into darkness before the ghost would appear. I said that. One local man, Jeremiah Bunker, said the ghost shape shifted. Finally. <laughs> a rational mind in the group. It appeared and disappeared several times. Quote, the personal shape when it disappeared first changed to a substance without form, then vanished. The full personal form appeared again in a moment. These changes I observed several times. One constant argument was that the voice was clearly Lydia. (laughs) Okay. When someone said that, Nellie would send Lydia away and then keep talking. Now what, bitch? (laughs) What's up now? (laughs) Quote, about 14 persons by the direction of the specter went into the cellar. As soon as they were there, the specter said to Lydia Blaisdell, go up and sit with others in the kitchen hearth that this company may know that it is not you who speaks. After she was gone up, the ghost conversed with the company on several topics suited to authenticate her mission. Okay, so tonight I'll talk about um, uh, God, um, snakes, um, uh, Prince. He's got a new album out. Awesome. And um, I guess uh, the show Mama's Family. Oh, it's a great show. This yeah. is great. So those are the topics tonight. Oh, I can't wait. Boo. Whoa, shit. <laughs> oh, that's uh, good. I'm a ghost. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, she told people to get as close to her as they wanted and ask whatever they wanted. Nellie would also talk about her life to convince people that she was Nellie. That's she a ta- nightmare. She talked about only stuff George knew about and then asked uh, if George remembered and he'd say yes. So they're all down so there George all the time. So George is now like also part of the act? I think they're all down there George, all the time. do you remember that? George. Yeah, I do. See? Isn't that crazy? <sighs> yeah. Then another time with George, okay. we um, were sitting around eating some bread mm-hmm. and George said, should we toast the bread? And what did I say? Do you remember what I said, George? You said, yeah. I said, yeah. Yeah. And then do you know what happened? Uh, yeah. What happened? Tell we did. To- we toasted, we toasted the, bread. the bread. Yeah. All right. So that ends the George portion. Yeah, this was great. Can I go? No, no, no. Okay, I'll sit here for another four hours. You might be hours. behind this. Okay. Um, one day she told Abner that his dad was in heaven. Good news. I just figured it out. Well, his dad was still alive, as Abner Jeez. thought. But it turns out his dad had been sick and had died seven days before, and the family in York had not yet sent news. Boy, sending news for a deceased father took that long. Yeah, but the ghost knew. 
the ghost knew about Abner's. Hmm. Uh, by mid August, Nelly's a hot ticket. Cellar is fucking packed. Yeah. Uh, but the more guys pa- move a little, we got to keep room for the fire exit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Excuse me, fire department here. Yeah. Uh, this is way overcrowded. This is a capacity 35. We've got at least 50 in here. Your son is ill. What? Your son's ill. No. Timmy, yeah, yeah. Timmy's fine. I left no, him in go Bo- home and look. I left him in Boston. He was fine. Go home and look. at. Go to Boston. Don't, don't do this. Go to Boston in the, the blizzard. Don't do this, ghost. Go to Boston. Don't do this, ghost. Go. Don't. Ooh. Don't do this, ghost. All right. Now I'm going to do stuff that I did with George. <laughs> One of my big hits. Um, the more packed the cellar got, the more others talked about the demonic shit that was going down in the Blaisdell's basement. In response, the ghost started preaching and talking about religion. One guy asked her if she loved Christ, and she said she did. Then she started singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, she can't be with the devil. Oh, I actually just recently became a Christian. <laughs> it's so weird, but now I, I identify with a religious sect. A local came down to the cellar a couple of days later to confront the ghost. He had been going around the village saying the ghost was the devil's doing. Ghost Nelly told him, quote, You have often said that I am a devil or a witch. I am from above, praising God and the Lamb. Yeah. A few days woman after that, a woman asked her if she came from happiness or misery, and Nellie said she was from above and came with God's message. Then she broke into hallelujah again. Hallelujah. And also, with these albums are for sale on the way out. <laughs> hallelujah. Um, on the 9th of August, a bunch of people who thought this was all fraud and uh, bullshit, like tricks, you know, came mm-hmm. to the cellar. Yeah. Um, things got very heated and physical. There was pushing and shoving. Sure. Some of the guys started showing uh, they could copy the knocks of Ghost Nelly. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, is it me or the ghost? I like how the knock is the thing that they're like, I see? Know. It's yeah. like, how about hey, I can copy be a an knock. apparition? Um, Abner threw them all out like a bouncer, so he's not like, like a ghost bouncer. Enough. One of those guys was Paul Simpson. The whole thing got really, bu- uh, really bugged him. And as he walked home, he decided he would get to the bottom of what he thought was fraud. And so he turned around and went back. That's it. Abner let Paul into the cellar and told him to light a candle and look around as much as he wanted. He said Paul would, could uh, grab anyone who appeared, meaning one, only one person is going to appear. Yeah. So, you know. It's the short list. Yeah. Paul waited until everyone and else. You, it's not just Nellie's ghost. <laughs> if you find any others, feel free to tackle them. Anything down here you can touch. It's fair game. This is our fucking room. Okay. Uh, so Paul waited until everyone left and made sure the door was locked. Uh, he's sure he's alone. And then the knocking began. Okay. Then Nellie appeared, but this time it was weird. First, the ghost was five feet high. And then it moved close to him and became as tall as a normal person. It went back and forth past him five times then shrunk down to a foot tall. Hello. And then disappeared. I'm little now. So that's some fucking showing off right there. Or it's that's some, some fucking bringing it. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Mister? I don't believe in me. <laughs> zoop, 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 bing. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. People in the towns of Franklin and really Sullivan. Like a reflection. We're really, yeah, we're really starting to get into heated arguments about the ghost or demon or fraud. Camps formed. On the night of August 13th, 47 people came to the Blaisdell house to see Ghost Nellie. She was uh, apparently prepared for it and was ready for a confrontation. Uh, Let's do this. At 1 a.m., she told them all to walk to a house two miles away. It was the house of James Miller, who was a huge loudmouth skeptic. Okay. So Ghost Nellie Nellie. told them to walk in in groups of two, right? Uh So side by side. And uh, sing the 80, 84th Psalm the entire time they walked. Okay. And Ghost Nelly said she'd follow them. I'll She's be like, there. I'll be right behind you guys. I'll be there. Um, as they walked, a few said they did see her walking with them while others said she Yo! was not there. Hey. Yeah. So some saw her and some didn't. Yeah. Okay. What is going on? When she finally got to the Miller house, everyone packed inside. 
one of the Blaisdell boys asked if Miller would go down to the cellar with him. And Miller said, sure, I'll go down to the cellar with you to see your fucking dumb shit, bullshit nonsense. Okay. When they got down there, the voice of Ghost Nelly said loudly, quote, I have come to let you know that I can speak in this cellar as well as the other. Are you convinced? I only do cellars. <laughs> Okay. And Miller's like, oh, fuck yeah. Uh, this is awesome. I'm totally in. No more skeptic. He goes up to, to talk to the crowd who have now moved back outside in front of his house. Um, and then they waited for Ghost Nelly to return. And she did right there. And then right she told there? them. Yeah. And in front she, of the house? Yes. And then she told them all to walk, keep walking. Go walk more. More. We're going to walk again. It's really good to do after two, dinner. In two, twos. Two by two. And we'll sing another psalm. Yep. Um, the ghost, uh, okay. This time ghost Nellie said she was going to walk besides Lydia, who was going to be at the front of the pack. Okay. She's um, a gal pal. <laughs> We've really bonded. The ghost said she was doing this to put an end to all the talk that Lydia was behind a deception or that she was a witch. As they walked, people watched as Lydia and ghost Nellie walked beside each other and sang a hymn together. Even the skeptics had We have a it. duets album. Everyone's like, I am in. Okay. Uh, after this march, the skeptics and believers um, who thought that it was a devil or whatever were pacified. Okay. This is a big fucking show. And everyone was like, I'm, this is, I'm in. I'm fucking in. Ghost Nelly then said she wanted her dead baby dug up and buried closer to her grave. On I, She's what? getting a little cocky. What? A little cocky. But now everyone, now she's convinced everyone. So now she's fucking all go the big. babies. Go big or go home. All the babies. Dig up your baby and get it buried closer to you. Jesus. Go big or go home. Uh, so she tells him she wants her baby uh, dug up and put closer to her grave. Um, this way they could go to heaven together on Judgment Day. And everyone was like, "Yeah, that's that's not silly." Cool. Fair request. We'll dig up your baby for sure. Um, we You're dig up babies. Awesome, Nelly. The thing is, we dig up babies and move them around all the time. Yeah, it's kind of what we do. It would be nice to have a purpose behind it for once. <laughs> On the day, the day of the excavation, 80 people from four towns came to watch a baby get dug up. Oh, God. The baby's corpse was moved 30 feet up the hill and placed next to Nellie. Things calmed down quite a bit after that, much less ghost. Okay. George and Lydia were married and now lived in Franklin. Okay. Lydia became pregnant. Oh, no. The baby was due on March uh, in March 1801, but the birth was difficult. Both Lydia and the baby died, no just way. as Ghost Nellie Butler had said they would. What? After she died, George put all of Lydia's belongings on a boat, pushed it out in the water, and set it on fire. But he's Viking funeral <laughs> over shit. Well, this probably meant that he thought there was some sort of witchcraft. It's in the clothes. Devilry. He burned all of her possessions. So it probably means he thought that she was up to no good. Because she, why? Because she died? No, because he might have thought she was behind the ghost shit. Like he. But, okay. He, he didn't, oh, okay. Right, right. Uh, but how do you, how does one. Remember, often, all this time has passed. So over time, people are more suspicious or less suspicious. Yeah, yeah. And clearly he became more suspicious. Right. But still. Got to burn that shit. Okay. The boat. was the hard thing to fake or like do intentionally? Um, so the boat is pulled out by the tides while it's burning. Okay. And it goes right past the Blaisdells farm. Hey. And the Blaisdells were really pissed that all of Lydia's shit's burning on a boat. Seems dramatic. They thought it was offensive to her memory. Yeah, yeah. Abner would forever hold a grudge against George. Oh, that's finally. Okay. <laughs> all right. Found a line. Yep. Finally found something that he's like, that's crazy. Um, George married again and had four kids. Uh, he was a traveling evangelist uh, who had come. Oh, oh sorry. There was, there was the traveling evangelist we had talked about before who had mm -hmm. come. Um, he ended up coming and getting eyewitness written accounts from people. Okay. He published all of them with letters about the haunting in a book. 37 letters. Uh, Dispositions and testimonies. Okay. In 1806, he was at home when two men said there was a ghost Who's walking it, around. George's? Uh, no, the... Oh, the, the, the uh, evangelical. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, so he's walking around. The f Two men come to his house and say, that, hey, there's a ghost in your field. Hey! <laughs> so uh, he looked out, but all he saw was a white rock, and he decided it was nonsense. Uh, he wrote down what he saw. 
Quote, three minutes after, I accidentally looked in the same direction and the white rock was in the air. It's form a complete globe, white and with a t- tincture of red, like the Damask Rose and its diameter about two feet. While my eye was constantly upon it, I went on four or five steps when it came to me from the distance of 11 rods as quick as lightning and instantly assumed a personal form with a female dress. I went into the house and gave the information, not doubting that she had come to spend some time with us as she had before. We went out to see her again, but to my great disappointment, she had vanished. That was the last time anyone ever reported seeing ghost Nellie Butler. The grudge Abner held against George for burning Lydia's stuff would continue for years. George joined the first uh, church in town of which Abner was a member, but at some point the church learned that George had burned all of Lydia's things and the church investigated it. George was then excommunicated from the church. Okay. Some in the church were against this, and the church basically split in half. Jesus. This is a divisive, divisive story. The split lasted 17 years until the church was finally dissolved. The reason was because so many disputes broke out over the boat burning. (laughs) For 17 years. Yeah. The ghost of Nellie Butler was seen in the day and the night in the cellar in four houses, including the Miller's house, after the two-mile walk, along the two-mile walk in fields, a couple of times outside in fields, she was the first recorded and documented ghost in American history, and many believe Nellie Butler's haunting led to America being swept by spiritualism in the 1800s. But nobody knows what in the fuck happened. What? What? Nobody knows. What are you talking about? Nobody knows. How do I go to bed? <laughs> What? Here's what I think. I think that Give Lydia me. and her George. sister okay. concocted some fucking way of throwing their voices around, probably through tubes. And then, like you said, a reflection, a, a lantern with a reflection. This is a time when people, um, you know, there wasn't, there's no fucking technology. There's no seeing no. weird shit. So if you were able to use light in a way. But they're or, saying it takes on a female form. Yeah, I know. And then I think that there's just some people who just saw, thought they saw shit, you know? What? The or it was actually fuck? a ghost. But it doesn't sound like it's our ghost. The thing is, is like everybody who talked to it, especially in August. But what was her mission? If, if Okay, if it was to a ghost. To get married. But they to get did, to marry George. Like, is, what's up? <laughs> Still here. I think that I think that she went. I think that she made it seem like the ghost came to Lydia and George to say you're going to dine here so that it would it would make people not think Lydia was behind the ghost. So she's right. when she did stuff like that it was like well that's kind of a threat to me so people will not think it was me. But when the ghost came back in August it was super fucking chatty and like hey. totally normal and it was like talking to a normal person it wasn't like talking like what? no you've never heard a story of someone just fucking hanging on talking with a ghost for 4 hours. Dave, I we need to get closer. We never will. Aaron. Watch, Lydia will drink a glass of water while I do it. It's truly the most insane ghost story in American history because it's not like there's some fucking weird haunting and people are being possessed. It's just a bunch of people fucking hanging out and talking to a and ghost. Every for skeptic hours. was like, every skeptic was like, oh, it is. No, oh, okay, no, I buy oh, it that, now. That is, I buy it. It was there. outside in a field. <laughs> yeah. Like they figured out how, how to do something. picking up rocks. I just look. Went, I just wish that before I'm training. I just wish before they had died, the sisters had. It would be the cool thing to do. Said right? Had yeah. said, yeah, we did this. Hey, we're the worst. Sorry. Yeah. And maybe they did, and the family was like, we can't tell people. Oh my god! Do you believe in ghosts? Now. <laughs> I, 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 for the most part, I always think demon familiar. Demon familiar. Yeah. Do you? Uh, I don't. I I don't. I mean, I believe a lot of crazy shit. I and I don't doubt. I, I yeah. I I, just, I can honestly go either way on ghosts. I'm pro. You're pro ghosts. I'm pro ghosts. I'm for them. But yeah, I don't. I, I mean, would say I would if I would, if you put a gun in my hand and said, "Do you believe in ghosts?" I'd say yes. Ghosts are real. Yeah. See, I don't think I'm that. I I don't. I'm not there. Can't go on the ghost. Trip. I believe in aliens. I believe crazy you shit happens. You do believe in aliens? Yeah. yeah. You think aliens are out there? 
That makes more sense than Nelly. Well, I'm not saying Nelly's a real ghost, but I'm saying that... Aliens, to me, make a lot more sense than a ghost. <laughs> what, are we eight years old? You've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Aliens make more sense than a ghost. <laughs> and an all new, why did they film it? Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, aliens make a lot more sense than ghosts. I should be handing you a blunt right now. Dude, hit that, and I'll tell you why, dude. But it's just so... It's also the religious aspect of people are just like, they want it to be like any sign that it's real. Please Well, that's what we're talking about, real. the Jesus, you know, the Jesus appearances. Yeah. Yeah, they they want... You want... If you, I mean, what what is what's different in that story is the amount of skeptics that there are that are uh, sold in the way that it is actually ends up being Nelly. Yeah, because normally it's like the people who already believe will be like, "Oh man, the Virgin Mary cried," you know, or whatever <laughs> right. their dumb shit is. And people were coming around. I I just think that they had because because of the time, they had to have had something that made a reflection that made everyone flip out because people would not be used to that. Like if you could, or just taking a light through a pinhole and making it appear bigger or something like that. You're talking pinhole light? Yeah, pinhole light. <laughs> <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot try to figure out what this is without sounding totally insane. No, any, any way you say it. And then my, in my head, I was like, what if it was like a bag? They put a lantern in a bag. Like there were so many things I was thinking uh, We of. are the bag lantern faction. Here to present to you a theory that here, we here, feel here, like here. is logical. Settle down, boys. Uh, or like, uh, uh, I mean, a, a lantern with a sheet around it. Dave, Dave, is... Dave, Dave, we Dave. can't. Dave, what are we doing? Well, I believe it to be a uh, <laughs> mirrored star beam. <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane. Aaron, do you believe in ghosts? No ghosts. Not even so Nelly? I'm the only one who possibly... See, we're on aliens. aliens yes, yeah. aliens make more sense than ghosts. Interesting. Yeah, aliens make more sense than ghosts, yeah. but I don't know why you have to compare them. Well, because they're both, you know, these sort of like unprove as of now unprovable, you know, otherworldly beings. They're. I just don't think it's like a ghost and an alien an alien would be an actual living breathing like biological thing that could exist out there i mean there's clearly life on other planets somewhere well there you go so you believe in space ghosts <laughs> i think we can meet in the middle <laughs> uh all right okay well we tried well, like, I mean, I, look I everyone, tried. everyone i tried to have an honest ghost discussion <laughs> <laughs> all right Take care, everybody. Um, do we have anything that we want to say? At the end? Uh, no, I don't well, think so. join uh, Planet Change. Planet, Planet 10. P L A N I T Change Ten. Uh, that's starting off, and uh, yeah, like we said, we're gonna have a, a, a nice slew of dates coming up. So yep, we will let you know. Thanks.